<laughs> as you see, she's almost as tall as I am today. I have on heels. She's <laughs> on heels. I have on my, my uh, I'm in my Rossellini, my, my Italian Rossellini and my, uh, you know, and my nice little, they gently don't dress like this in the news, but she's in her, her Birgit Mueller. Birgit C. Mueller, yeah. multi-award multi winning Emmy designer. I only got nominated for an Emmy, I never got one, so. But that's still pretty big deal. I know, but, uh, you know, th but this is old camp. And this is not a spring chicken today. We're going to be talking about? The uh, fall of Walmart. Why are we talking about the fall of Walmart? Well, because it is falling stock-wise, and the fact that we're pissed off at the fact that they no longer have customer service at Walmart. Well, I mean, wasn't Walmart known for customer service before? Yeah. They were known for customer service, but now customer service is totally shot. I mean, you know, complaining to management at a Walmart is like talking to a brick wall now because they, they no longer care. Well, you know, there's one thing that they always do respect, and that's the power of the dollar. Actually, not seems that anymore because Walmart, Walmart is basically reshuffling all its executives because the company is just losing market share. They're losing market share to dollar stores now. Who are basically in trouble themselves? Mm -hmm. We know, like the 99 cent store is basically in trouble because they're, they're hitting them continually on uh, they're hitting them on uh, out, an out of date merchandise and selling stuff that they shouldn't be selling in their stores. What do you think is just the economy? Well, yeah, part of it is. Well, part of it is. Yeah, but um, what happened was Walmart had almost all the business because Target did, Target couldn't compete with them until Target put big superstores in, but the superstores don't come anywhere near the amount of Walmarts. And, uh, and Goodwin, like they spent uh, $4 billion to redo the Kmarks and didn't put grocery stores in them. And who do you think was the third largest owner of grocery stores in the nation at that time? Ooh. Kmart. Oh. Really? Company. You don't even hear about Kmart anymore. I think they also. I mean, is that just a California thing? But I think Maybe they right? also own a, more in other Wall and Books. A Wall and Books. Yeah, yeah which, which you don't hear about anymore. Yeah, that those that, you know all those books you see in the Kmart, those are from um, you know, the Wall and Books chain, I think. But um, what happened was was Walmart pissed off his customers by deciding. Okay, what happened was Walmart used to basically well, she's in the grocery industry. She can tell you about uh, shelf space and how that's handled. So this is your part of it. Oh, you want me to tell them about shelf space? No, shelf space is handled because Walmart was doing the same thing to all their purveyors. Oh, well, let's see. When you have shelf space, okay, well, P&G, you know, as in Procter & Gamble, was, all, was one of the ones that was, I wouldn't say most guilty of this, but most prevalent, is we're just going to take, for example, the soap aisle, okay? Say you've got 20 soap manufacturers and P&G always comes up with a new brand, the new and improved Tide, right? Or the new and improved, or the clean one, and the scented one, and the not. Well, what happens is there's only a limited amount of shelf space. So what happens is either you get rid of something else, or that brand expands. Oh, you see that happens. Now, how do you know whether a brand should expand? Well, it either comes through a, um, it's very popular, so they sell more of it. B, you really want it because it's popular. And so you have to give up other brands that are not as popular because there's only so much shelf space. Oh, would that happen? Yeah. Um, hmm. This supplier may represent a number of different companies, and to get that one specific brand, which is pretty much the same thing, yeah. you need to give them all this extra shelf space. That's right. Oh, it all comes down to shelf space? Yeah, and, it all, and it also you could buy that shelf space. My mother yes. My mother was in the grocery business for the last decade of her business life, and she worked for one of the larger grocery chains. She was in charge of the bakery division of the other chain. She, they would come in and, uh, you know, they'd say, one of the, like, uh, interstate bakeries, you know, I, I would like my product. You know, but you know your product is down here. Well, I'd like my product up here, and then they'd make deals to move the people out up there to down there, mm -hmm. and uh, and then the people up there were down there. Now are trying to make deals to move move up it. there, and that they would buy shelf space for products, and then they say, and like like what with Walmart, Walmart was doing the bit you said, you know, they would make deals with people to control all the shelf space on in, in an area. And then they excluded all the things, all the other things. But it was the other things that brought people into Walmarts. 
the total variety. When it is we simply go to non-variety and a lot of one product. Well, yeah, because for example, if you ever notice when you go into a store, sometimes they have a lot of the same product. Yeah. Guess where that comes from? <laughs> yeah, because the company is basically doing that. Uh, and then all Walmart also was basically. Uh, uh, you had to meet Walmart's requirements, which basically you had to give them a, knock, a fee in order to be featured in their stores. The problem is because of the economy going down, the companies aren't paying to be featured anymore. And you're going, what do you mean pay to be featured? Okay, when we talk about pay to be featured, we're talking about it's on the end of the aisle mm -hmm. and there's and or a promotional item. Yeah. So if they have an ad that has them, that company is helping to pay for that ad. That's right. You're likely to see those ads also in the center of the aisles. You know, when they have the big walkways, those featured items also can be in the center. Are there's even one more big place that you pay for to have your far product featured, and that is as you leave the building. Oh, actually, they do have that huge space. Um, actually, when you walk into the building, when you leave the building, when you first walk in by the carts, there's that huge wall mm -hmm. of product. Or when you leave, there's that huge wall of product. Same thing in a regular supermarket when you first walk in. Depending on how it's set up, all that stuff in the front, a lot of times you think, oh, it's seasonal. Well, yeah, sometimes it's seasonal. And they get the manufacturers to do it because, you know, don't you want beer and chips during the Super Bowl? That's right. Yeah, for Dale. Yeah, but that's Dale. You're paying... Uh, you're helping to sponsor the advertisements for your product being put right where people have to walk by them as you come into mm -hmm. the store. So it just, uh, like I said... Well, cause, and, and they do the promotional pricing because part of it is as a consumer, when you go in, you're like, and you see it and you're like, oh yeah, we got to get some beer and chips for the Super Bowl. Yeah. Right? And you see, and so you don't typically run all over the place, especially if you're in a rush, you're like, oh, it's all right here, let's just grab from these. Yeah. Those are the ones on sale. It so makes it convenient. And mm -hmm. uh, so it... Uh, but what we did the other day, we ran into a, 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 okay, Walmart is now starting to develop racist policies in a store, which the store, when you go to the manager and tell him that you've just been hit with racism, the manager doesn't give a damn. When the manager won't even go talk to the people where the problem is, and the people are standing like 20 foot away from them, they know that there's a problem and they're not supposed to deal with it. Yeah. Because then we ran into the problem. We went into the Walmart. I coach. I, I had to, okay. My tuxedo. Just before I got my tuxedo, was across the street from the Walmart. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have any uh, handkerchiefs. So we knew the Walmart carries handkerchiefs. So we went in there. We picked up a few things to go with it. Some makeup for not a spring check and some, you know, some. I got we got the coffee was on sale, but we got some stuff and uh, we went to the checkout. And because Walmart, Walmart basically has cut back on people at the house. They know they have registers. registers now because that's a sign of the economy that they are cutting back on. They used to have tons of registers open now. I mean, like the place is just full of people, massive lines at the registers. They had four registers open and um, five uh, checkout. checkout things. Self-checkout. Self self-checkout. So, uh, so what we did was we went over to self-checkout because we only had like five, six items that we're going to go through. And so because of the, you know, they do have fire marshal problems in these stores. you got to keep the, the uh, walkways clear. So they moved everybody over into one line, fed to the checkout things out of one line in order to keep it civil. So what happened was an Afro-American lady and some of her friends decided they didn't give a damn about what was going on. They went to a black cashier. The black cashier then basically decided, well, these people are going to that one. I mean... All, you know, that line that we're after all the way around the thing, they're going to this one cash register, so these, this is, you can go to this one. Well, yeah, and then the, the basically the, the nice little Afro-American types all fit into those cash registers. And, uh, and, and of course she says, oh, I'm not trying to crowd in line. Yeah, no. But we went to... I just wanted to ask her a question. Yeah, and then she put her in line and put everybody else over there and just basically said to hell with all the people that are waiting in line and doing what they were told to do. Got to remember, folks, everybody in that line was white. Well, you know, the, the irritating part was when we complained to the lady, she says, oh, God loves you. I'm thinking, that has nothing to do with it. Oh, I know. We, we, <laughs> we, we went to the management... Management didn't even get off his ass to go do anything. And you know, his, he went the opposite direction. You know what they were, well, I'll get, you go get your stuff and I'll see you're checked out. And then you ask the question, well, what about the people that are also eating over there? Were they going to get checked out real quick? No, they were stuck because of the, 
of racism in a Walmart. Basically, what happens is you get stories like this done about Walmart, which does not help Walmart. You say, well, you should have went to the media people at Walmart, and they would have handled it. You know what happens when you go to Walmart today, unlike the way it used to be? They hand it back to the store manager. The store manager is told to get rid of the problem, and it just goes away. So at this time, it hasn't went away. Walmart is collapsing under the weight of its own stupidity. They no longer have good customer service. I mean, you ever seen people having a, you know, a lot of people go to Walmart, you know, going to the return line, and the return line is being forced to stand outside the building? That happens at Costco. Yeah, but it doesn't happen at Walmart. Walmart is known for customer service. I mean, they'll take things back. No, no, that was known. Was known, yeah, no, but it's basically, it's no longer known for anymore. I mean, and here's the, here's the big part about it. Uh, she's Asian. And I'm an American Indian, so we. Well, see, part of it is you can't tell he's American Indian. He just looks like a white boy. Right? I know, but unfortunately, it does mean that we were victims of racism in a Walmart. And I'm obviously Asian. Yeah. Well, see, our federal government doesn't care if it's racism against white people. But we are white. I'm listed on the census forms as Indian. My mommy is an Indian. My grandmommy's an Indian on both sides of my families. So I'm an Indian, folks. You know, you know, I qualify. There's enough of me to be an Indian. So what happened was, it then became not reverse racism, it became flat out racism in the Walmart. Mm -hmm. Because when, as, as our government says, it can't be racism against white people, it can only be racism against minorities and minorities. I'm a bigger minority Well, you know, part so. of it is, is it's racist whether it's against white, black, no, but they don't, they, white, uh, African Americans, Asians, our justice, Latinos. But our Justice Department difference. has said there cannot be racism done against white people. Only white people can do racism. I know, that is just like, but if, they can't uh, even read the dictionary. They, they don't, they, well, they probably can't read their product or educational system. But um, no, it just, we're, you know, we're, we're griping about things. But I mean, all you got to do is look, watch the stock market and see Walmart falling every quarter, it gets worse. It is basically, they canned everybody and tried to refix the problem. You know, uh, they can't get the people that they threw out of their stores to come back because they're now going to other stores. Then the, That would be a problem. And the, they're not being able to pick up the money, the money they used to make. I mean, how about this? Walmart managers owning airplanes Wow, you can do very well as a Yeah, Walmart airplanes, manager. boats, places. You're not talking about those little ones. No, I'm talking about airplanes. We're talking, they own, you know, cigarette boats. Because oh, does this have anything to do with shelf space? Yeah. That, oh. is, that is ended because of the fact that it's a reset. You know, the, um, the problem is no matter what, the cost of merchandise is going up and people are spending less money at the stores. So therefore, the, the businesses are not making as much money. They're not restocking the shelves that they do do have in the store. So basically, go into a Walmart and see how many shelves have empty spaces on them. That is not how the business used to be ran. They used to have uh, semi trucks. Okay, Walmart was weird. Walmart would park semi trucks as parking lot, and they'd go out to the, they'd, they'd go to the trailers and pick out the merchandise they needed for the stores. You don't see those trucks parked anymore. Only what's on in the building are they putting out now, and they're not getting because gasoline is higher, shipping is higher because people are having. Nobody's buying things, they're not shipping as much anymore. Mm -hmm. So it just all comes to hurt a business that was basically based upon having ungodly amount of stuff. Walmart is basically um, is downsizing its business now. Oh, it is? Yeah. And out of this country, they're going great guns. Because everybody loves Walmart out of the country, but then, you know, they probably have customer service, which they don't have here. But we just thought that, we, you know, we just jump on the anti-Walmart bag at the moment because everybody else is and because we've seen oh, it firsthand. Oh, that's why we're doing it? No, no, we've seen it firsthand. This is not the first time this has happened in a Walmart to us. Well, and part of it is you favor Walmart for a long time because you've known Walmart where, in places where you've lived. Yeah. Walmart, to me, is relatively new because it hasn't been in California for a very long time. I mean, the okay, the super stores tend to have a different attitude than the regular stores. Okay. Which I discovered. Well, we go to a superstore all the time, but the problem is with the superstore that we go into because of the price crunch, they have now stopped carrying as much merchandise. We used to stop in there to get something, uh, to get something on the way to Las Vegas. You to get these on. huge sandwiches, now, fresh bacon. Now their huge sandwiches are the same price, but they're half the size of what they were before. They're I like know. little bullet sandwiches. The cost now. of bread. Yes, the cost of bread went up. Well, because there used to be, there, uh, the bread on the, in the bakeries were 99 cents before, but they're like $2.50 now. Mm. 
So naturally they're not giving you, they're not going to give you a $2.50 thing for, so they give you one, they give you a bullet piece and charge you the same price, but uh, it is changing. The, the country is changing. It's, it's not changing for the best, it's changing for the worst. All you got to do is see a, an American-born industry that's starting to collapse. And Walmart was an American-born business, folks. I mean, I was, uh, I can remember when my mother, um, years ago, she was, she, you know, I needed a new set of, a new set of cowboy boots to work in. And I didn't want to pay the money they wanted out here. When they were, she was on vacation, and he said, you know, we got, we got some Tony Lama boots here for 50 bucks. And, what? Yeah, he said, yeah. you know, she said, go to the store and find out what your boot size is. <laughs> yeah. So I went to the store, found that made certain my boot size was, and she said, okay, we'll get the boots. And he said, don't worry. She said, uh, you know, if, if the boots are the wrong size, then uh, your uncle will take them back for you. We'll ship you back. he take them back. So, no, but that, that's how I got introduced to Walmart, Tony Lama boots, which were... That's pretty unbelievable. Yeah, we are really, they are god-awful expensive way back in those days, you know, you know, when Walmart first opened, but they, you know, but they had service like you would not believe, everybody friendly. Now, those days have now gone bye-bye. So, it's not, you know, so we've seen it. I've seen it from the beginning, and I've seen this death throes right now, and I don't mm -hmm. think they're going to, they simply... They push the envelope too far. I mean, you do realize that they have tags on your, on a lot of your stuff where they can tell where your merchandise is going to. First thing you, you should do, yeah, when you get out of the store, just strip out all of those tagging that they got and everything. Well, see, part of it is you go, what are those? These are these computer circuit tags, and they use them. Actually, you know who would use them like UPS and Federal Express, right? Yeah. Because. Um, and I don't know if they exactly use it, but everything's barcoded. So you know when you check on your package, it'll tell you it left or it arrived in Los Angeles or it left such and such. It's because the merchandise is tagged and then it passes that point and it scans through it. Yeah, and uh, Walmart has its own, as I understand, its own system which will tell you when you bring a piece of merchandise back, they actually know where the stuff was bought at to begin with. If you don't bring it back to the same store, they more than likely will accept it. But if but if you happen, if they, you know, if your name happens to be, you know, Chin Ho, and you and a guy comes in and he brings it in, and his name is, uh, you know, Mueller. Uh, why is this? You know, I have a thing at, over here at the store, in you know, in El Segundo. You say it's a Christmas present. Yeah, but it's, it's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they'll, you know, they're returning it for cash, mm -hmm. so. Now they can tell absolutely. You know, they'll match the name with the person that bought the. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if they're returning the merchandise, and sometimes they really get sticky about it, folks. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, we're, we're, you're going to hear more about Walmart because they do more and more stupid things. You know, it's kind of this American business that is basically you know like Blockbuster was American creation, and now Blockbuster is going, mm -hmm. and it looks like you know that um, that uh, well, Circus City is gone. The most of the big Appliance stores are gone, the, um, so I think block that Walmart is probably on the dinosaur list now also. Mm. But it's until more about it until next time. This is okay. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for more information. You can go to www.montebubbles.net on the net. And wherever you're watching us, um, subscribe to us, watch our daily newscasts in 3D, and thank you once again for over 40 million links on the internet. <laughs>